sulfuric acid's corrosive salt is salty. HCl gases produced in this reaction is also corrosive. Do not inhale it. Sodium bisulfate is also corrosive. And don't be me on wear some gloves for the love of God and wear goggles. This reaction also foams a lot and can blow up your apparatus. And conch sulfuric may be illegal in your area. This is for demonstrational and educational purposes only. Welcome back everyone, so today we're making hydrochloric acid and sodium bisulfate, which both will be used in our chlorosulfuric acid synthesis, which failed actually, so yeah. So first you need 58 grams of salt, just ordinary table salt, non-iodized is ideal, add to a 500 milliliter round bottom flask, and then add in some water until it's sort of a slurry I guess. And this is because I found this reaction loves to foam up, and that foam, I believe, is caused by um, sort of like passivation of sorts when the sulfuric acid coats the salt particle and foams up and yeah the foam just keeps foaming and um now you need 55 milliliters of sulfuric acid to add into an addition funnel on top and set up your ice water receiver just grad cylinder in an ice bath that's really it and start adding some sulfuric acid drop by drop and ideally you'd have stirring but i was too lazy to set that up so yeah and um, you can see we get a mist of HCl gas, and that's due to water. Which, um, if you, and, yeah, like, once the air is purged out, you see the bubbles start dissolving in the ice water. And that's our hydrochloric acid forming, basically. It's the HCl dissolving. However, you can see some does escape, but most of it's absorbed by the time it reaches the top of the grad cylinder. And... While I'm talking about this, um, specifically 500 milliliter round bottom, because my last attempt, which was a 251, foamed over and blew up. And now, ideally, you'd actually use a one liter flask for this reaction, but too late to clean mine, so yeah, we're just using a 500 mil. Just be careful with the foaming issues, and the water prevents the foaming because it dissolves some some of the sodium bisulfate, I believe. But yeah, that sort of this reaction but um if you want to make hcl gas for like making ethereal hcl or back gassing it into a solution i would recommend dripping concentrated hcl to concentrated sulfuric acid it works a lot better and it's less messy and also you could recover the sulfuric acid afterwards but this works i guess so as you can see um the gas rate has decreased so we're gonna start heating it now and this is the part where you have to really be careful about foaming because it really loves to foam. And yeah, just heat it. And um, ideally, you'd put like a reflux condenser on top of this, but yeah. So, as you can see, it bubbles away, I guess, making HCl gas. And um, this is a very easy, um, like, this is a very common, um, like, time where it just foams up and explodes your apparatus so be careful when heating it but as you can see we're getting some nice gas generation and it's not foaming up too much however when it starts to run dry that's when the foam really is an issue here have some footage of it foaming because it looks cool So you can see the gas just dissolving away, so that's a good sign. And you can see when it starts to run dry, it really starts to foam up, so that's an issue, but yeah. And I apologize if my voice is sort of raspy, don't know why, but probably not COVID, I doubt it's that. And you can see suck back happened because the flame went out for a second. Yeah, luckily it's all captured in this addition funnel. However, we're going to distill the hydrochloric acid anyway, so... Yeah, I'm just going to continue generating more gas until it no longer generates anything. So now, combine your HCl. Well, well, for me, I have to combine it, but if your HCl is pure, then it's pure. But anyways, we're going to distill it, so add it into a flask and, yeah, just set it up for distillation. Um, the hydrochloric acid boils at a t azeotrope of 20% HCl in water at a slightly over 100 Celsius, so... If it's above 100 Celsius, then you're getting the good product of 20% HCl. And um, you could bubble more HCl in to get 32% or 37%, but you don't really need that, I guess. 
you can if you want because most labs use that and as you can see there's nothing really left over just a tiny bit of leftover stuff and here's our hydrochloric acid nice 20 percent stuff very useful for the lab and also it's iron free because it's distilled and now you could take a density measure of it but i don't bother conch is conch it doesn't really matter how conch it is it just has to be roughly in the range so i just stored mine in a pt bottle but it should work fine. Ideally, you'd use glass, but whatever. So now, to your um, cake in the, the still, um, the HCl generating flask, add in some hot water, and with some swirling, the cake will um, free itself from the glass and dissolve. This is mostly sodium bisulfate, but may also contain traces of sodium sulfate and leftover sulfuric acid, and maybe some leftover NaCl, although I doubt that. So, yeah, I just swirl it for a good few minutes and uh, don't shake it though because if it if the cake does loosen up you're gonna smash the flask i've done that multiple times with um the leftover stuff in a nitric acid distilling flask so yeah don't shake it just swirl it carefully and you can see it's loosened up so now just heat it to dissolve up the rest and if you did it right um there should be real um there should be like it should be perfectly saturated at this temperature however mine wasn't because it didn't crystallize upon cooling so i had to boil it further and this also does remove some hcl because um it will you can see the steam um it looks more different than proper steam but on camera i don't think you can see that very well but it definitely stunk of hcl so yeah boil this well ventilated area Anyways, um, after it's done boiling, just filter it, and that's because salt typically has anti-caking agents such as calcium silicate, which, well, it won't do much, like, bad things in your reactions, it's, eh. although my single coffee filter didn't really work well, so, yeah, you could probably just let it settle off, and, yeah, just filter it, and that's basically it, let it crystallize, however, as you can see, I put mine in the refrigerator, but it did not crystallize. There was too much water in it still. So I just ended up boiling it down into a sludge and then just filtering that sludge for the sodium bisulfate crystals. Really quite a decent amount, but this way it does also get more contaminated with NaCl and Na2HSO4. No, no, sodium sulfate, not whatever that is. But yeah. Just wash it a tiny bit, that's to remove any um, HCl, because you don't really want HCl in your product. At least not if you're gonna like do the next step. And you could take the filter and also boil it down further, which is what I did, but it yields a less pure product, but eh, that's fine. So here's our sodium bisulfate drying on the hot plate. And um, yeah, be careful not to decompose it. I doubt your hot plate can reach like 400 Celsius, but um, yeah, just be wary that it may decompose, and also it releases HCl fumes during this step as well, because, well, it, it's wet with, like, some HCl. So, here's your nice dry and fine free-flowing powder, I guess I would call it, although it's still sore fumes of HCl, but not much. Now, I suspect this is sort of a mixture between monohydrate and anhydrous sodium bisulfate, because... Um, you heat it, obviously. Um, like, sodium bisulfate monohydrate melts at around, like, 200 Celsius, so if it melts, it's probably, um, the monohydrate. But if it melts and solidifies, that's anhydrous, but it doesn't really matter for my purposes. So, obviously, it's gross, so be careful with it. And that's how you make hydrochloric acid and sodium bisulfate from salt and sulfuric acid. Thanks for watching.